Well, thank you, Biceps Byron. But we do. It's quite an interesting situation. We've got a whole bunch of hornbills that are busy feeding next to the road, and a lot more than you would normally see. They, at one stage, was eight of them, and they're pecking slowly at the ground, and I don't know what they've managed to find. It seems as though there's something that's moving around, and maybe it's termites. We often find termites walking at night and, and actually feeding at night. They'll do a lot of feeding at that time. But you can see they're feverishly pecking away at the grass. But even when we watch them up close, we can't see what they're actually throwing in. So whatever it is, it must be absolutely tiny. I was thinking that it's possible maybe somebody had a drink stop here and dropped some crumbs, but they've been at it for so long and there were so many of them at one point, I don't think it can be that. And you can see they're still finding stuff. So even with that big powerful beak, they're able to see with the eyes and then just grab it and be pretty actually versatile, that beak, and, and grab all little things as well as big things. And you'll find if there are termites, which I'm thinking it could be, then those will be highly nutritious and full of protein. So it's worth jumping around and, and stabbing into the grass to grab them but it is very difficult we've even tried to use the camera to punch in very tight and see if we can't see what they're picking up but it's no real sign i suppose termites would be quite well camouflaged in the grassy areas as well but maybe some of you will be able to grab a screenshot as the bird throws its head back and we can see what's actually going into the mouth between the beak it's a, quite a challenge, but you never know. We've now got a birchal starling that's starting to come in as well. There's a birchal starling that's just being chased by the hornbills. You see the hornbills are chasing after it. They're saying, no, you will not eat our food. And then there's also a ground scrape, two ground scrape, the thrushes that are busy running around in the background. Now, they're a lot more obscured, but they're at the back near that small little green tree. There they are. So there's our ground scraper thrushes are also getting involved. So there must be some sort of food source that we've got this many birds on the ground. Oh, and there's a hornbill that's actually got an injury. So there's one hornbill that's very close to us. This one, that one there, yes, that one sends up. You'll see that it hops on one leg. Look, it's holding its foot out. So you see it's not actually hopping on two legs. The one foot seems to be damaged in some way. What's wrong with your foot? No, nope. are you just hopping around on the one foot? Maybe it's got a little thorn in it or something. I don't know, actually. It sometimes happens with birds that they do get injuries to their feet. And I'm just trying to see if there isn't something wrapped around it doesn't look like it it looks as though it's almost a bit of a deformity that the foot is growing out at an angle slightly the rest of the bird looks very healthy so i don't know it doesn't look like it's been attacked by anything there we go you see the foot is out to the side exquisite bliss you say you would hate to be picked by a hornbill I, I would imagine it will hurt they seem to have quite a stabbing motion and that beak is not exactly small you see how it's holding that foot up shame is I wonder what's wrong with it it's definitely not happy about walking and hopping on the foot itself but yes I think a peck from that beak would not be a pleasant experience it's big and it's got quite a sharp end and hornbills seem as though they have complete control over it so they look like a bird that would cause trouble now I know Ali back in South America they have toucans which are very similar to the hornbills and she actually had one for a while and she said that they are quite a handful to look after and they do use their beak for all kinds of things and it is quite painful to be pecked by one so I would definitely definitely say it wouldn't be a pleasant experience now unfortunately our line tracks have crossed north into Buffalo's Hook there's no sign of them coming back yet So Kirst says we should save it and have it as a camp pet. Well, Kirst, no, that's not going to happen. We already have enough hornbills in camp. They uh, cause absolute havoc. They keep pecking at my side mirror and have scratched my car all over the place and there's droppings all over it. So enough of the hornbills for now. And it seems as though it's healthy and full and fat. So it's doing just fine on its expedition by itself so it will be okay if it's survived this long and that's not a new injury by the looks of it then I think it will be okay but whatever it's doing it's found itself a really nice lot of food what's interesting is that generally you'll find when there's hornbills around that the yellow billed hornbill being slightly bigger and a bigger beak generally dominates the red billed hornbills but here at the moment we've got red billed and yellow billed and they're feeding together I think there's so much food that they actually can't kind of chase one another you can see there's the red billed hopping at the back there so they're also around and you can see how much smaller the beak is as well as the bird it's not as big and bulky and so generally they have to give way to the yellow builds but in this particular situation I think the yellow builds are content with the fact that they've got more than enough food 
and that's why they're able to actually just carry on feeding. Right, we're going to leave our hornbills, let them digest whatever they've been eating.